React 18 provides a number of useful features, but one of the less celebrated but still important addition is the new use ID hook, and that is exactly what we will cover in this lesson, so let's go. The use ID hook finds its main use case within forms, which is what 90% of software development is for some software developers. To demonstrate its utility, we have a simple person form that has two fields, first name and last name. Each field has a label and an input, and we use the attribute HTML4 to link the label to the input with a given ID. Now this label to input with HTML4 and ID linking provides a number of accessibility features. So to demonstrate some of that, let's put this form into our app component. We put a simple heading to specify that we are collecting the details for a host and then use our person form. And this is what our app component looks like when rendered within the browser. A key feature provided by that attribute linking is that we can click the labels and it will automatically focus the user onto the specified input. But there is one key issue with our person form implementation. If we have two instances of the person form, for example, one for the host and one for the guest, when we view the application in the browser, clicking on the first name and the last name labels for the guest takes us to the input fields on the host. And we are also violating an HTML rule that a particular value of the ID attribute should only exist on one DOM element on the entire document. And these are some of the problems that the use ID hook solves. To fix our codebase, we bring in the use ID hook, which is now exported from the React package, and then invoke this hook at the root level of our person form. This ID will be unique for our entire document, and we can use this as a prefix to create unique IDs for our individual fields. Now with this change in place, clicking on the first name and the last name labels for the host takes us to the host inputs, and clicking on the labels for the guest takes us to the guest inputs. In terms of the internals, you should treat the values generated by use ID as opaque, but if you are curious like me, these are the values that got generated during this test. This is just one of the ways in which React continues to evolve, providing us with utilities to help us write better code. One of the most common mistakes that I find in code bases is how conditional rendering is handled, and that is something that I cover in a dedicated lesson over here. Thank you for joining me, smash the like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.